Hi there! In this module, we will cover different aspects of the production machine learning model performance. We will explain some of the popular metrics and tests and how to apply them. We will cover different topics like what it means to have a good machine learning model, evaluating machine learning model quality, tracking data quality in production, and using data and prediction drifts as the proxy metrics. This module includes both theoretical parts and code practice for each evaluation type. At the end of this module, you will have an understanding of machine learning observability contents, metrics and checks you can run, and how to interpret them. Let's dive in. In this module, we will focus on different machine learning monitoring metrics. Previously, we discussed that there are at least four different group of metrics which worth monitoring. These are software system health, data quality and integrity, machine learning model relevance and quality of course, and business KPI. When it comes to standard machine learning monitoring, we always start from measuring the performance. There are quite a lot of standard performance metrics like precision, recall, log loss for classification models, or mean absolute error for regression models. And of course, it's even better when you have a deep understanding of the service and the business value of the service, and you can also add product metrics like purchases, clicks, views, and etc. But unfortunately, it is not always enough. First of all, we cannot guarantee that we will be able technically to measure the performance because we can have the delayed feedback or ground truth. One of the solutions is to rely on the previously estimated performance metrics and assume that in the future we will have more or less the same performance. Unfortunately, it doesn't always like this, especially if we have pretty unstable or volatile environment. We can also have a problem statement where we have a lot of different types of the objects. For example, different categories of services or maybe different groups of products or different types of users. So in this case, the aggregated performance matrix just is not enough and we need to make sure that we monitor for the performance for each group of the users or objects. And finally, what you can see is the very volatile target function and very volatile performance metrics. In this case, we can easily mix up the local maximums or minimums of performance metrics with the global quality drop and react for nothing. So it's very important to make sure that we can differentiate between some local quality drop with the major issues. How can we tackle such difficulties? Actually, together with standard performance metrics, we can adapt some metrics for early monitoring. Those metrics should be based on something which we always have, and these are input data and models output data. Basically, having those data, we can calculate data quality, so we will be able to cover for issues with quality and integrity. We can calculate data drift, so that we can track for changes in the input feature distributions. And finally, the output drift, to track for a change in the model predictions. So, in this module, we will mostly focus on two groups of metrics, which are data quality and data integrity, and of course, model quality and the relevance. And the structure of the module will be the following. We will start from the model quality and we will have theoretical part where we will discuss quality metrics for regression problem, classification problem and ranking. Then we will have a practical part where we will build the sample report with quality metrics. Later, we will move to data quality metrics and again, we will start from the theoretical part where we will discuss quality metrics and then we will have a practice with the sample report in Python. And finally, we will move to data and prediction drift. There we will have quite huge discussion of the data and prediction drift metrics. We will have an optional block with the deep dive into the different methods to detect data drift and finally, we will have a code practice with different methods to calculate drift for different types of data and understanding how to interpret drift results.